The final item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion Number 12250 in the name of Annabel Goldie on Greenock Ocean Terminal. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if members who wish to speak in the debate could please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Annabel Goldie to open the debate. Seven minutes or so, Ms Goldie. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, thank you very much indeed. I am delighted that this motion has been selected for debate and I want to thank everyone who has supported it. Greenock Ocean Terminal in the beautiful Clyde Estuary on Scotland's west coast offers a unique facility, a deep water quay and modern quayside facilities. And the natural deep water port of Greenock offers a safe port for cruise ships of all sizes, accessible 24-7 with no tidal or lock restrictions. So Greenock Ocean Terminal is a success story for Inverclyde and I'm delighted to be able to debate this motion today. The terminal has arisen like a phoenix um, from the old Princess Pier, so beloved by the former passengers of the old Clyde steamers and I'm indebted to the Greenock Telegraph for much of the information in my speech. Peel Ports, who own the cruise terminal, have predicted that in 2015 it will become the first port in Scotland to handle over 100,000 passengers, making it the biggest and busiest uh, passenger port in Scotland. And during the year, 56 ships transporting a total of 108,866 passengers are expected to call at Greenock Ocean Terminal, and that represents seven more vessels than in 2014. Passenger numbers are interesting. They have more than quadrupled at Greenock over the last eight years. In 2000, uh, over 20,000 passengers passed through the terminal, and last year the figure was in excess of 92,000. It has been predicted that the Inverclyde economy will receive an £8.7 million boost from the expected record-breaking number of tourists and visiting crew. And tourists and crew members spending locally are a huge help to local businesses. The terminal will also be visited by state-of-the-art cruise ships, the Royal Princess, the Regal Princess and the Queen Mary II as part of Canard's 175th anniversary celebrations. And there will be the first direct sailing from Scotland to the Caribbean with Fred Olsen Line's Black Watch departing Greenock in November on a 32-day round trip. So if I'm not here, Deputy Presiding Officer, you know where to look. <laughs> I have to say that uh, breaking the 100,000 passenger barrier is an amazing achievement. Port Glasgow, Greenock and Gourock used to be synonymous with shipping to and from all parts of the world, not to mention the flotilla of Clyde steamers which plied locally. And changing patterns of marine transportation and changing patterns of tourism all brought their own challenges to this great waterway. But the ocean terminal has found a niche and proof of the efforts made to develop and enhance the experience of overseas visitors arriving at Greenock is there for all to see. The terminal works in partnership with the Inverclyde Tourist Group, which provides an ambassador service for the area by greeting crews and passengers on arrival. And because the terminal is a deep water port, cruise ships berth alongside the quay and passengers disembark through a very pleasant and welcoming terminal and are met by members of the Inverclyde Tourist Group. I visited the group in 2013 and it was highly uh, impressive. The group is from the Inverclyde area. It was formed in 2001 to promote Inverclyde in a friendly and informal way. It's made up of volunteers and the group is a non-profit making organisation. Inverclyde Tourist Group members meet and greet cruise ship passengers, providing information on places of interest to visit, places to eat and drink, transport, local shopping, internet and telephone access, clan history and tartan. And for cruise ship passengers, the group also runs local coach tours on cruise call days. And the group members are proud to show tourists around this lovely part of the west of Scotland. And Deputy Presiding Officer, I congratulate them on their first class efforts. Their hard work was recognised when Greenock Ocean Terminal won the accolade of best cruise port reception in the world uh, in 2013. And I am delighted that the tourist group is there to sing the praises of Greenock and Inverclyde. I have to say as a Bishopton resident, a former Greenock Academy pupil and a Waterloo Road honorary head girl deputy presiding officer, I am very well aware of what the local area has to offer and how friendly and welcoming the local people are. On a glorious day, the views across the water from Greenock are quite simply stunning. 
Inverclyde is a terrific part of Scotland with shopping facilities, restaurants, cafes, pubs and a variety of sporting facilities. There are excellent rail links and the area is served by the M8 motorway which makes it easily accessible by car. And the Cruise Scotland website sums up why cruise ships are picking Scotland as a destination and I quote, As a cruise destination, Scotland is undoubtedly up there with the best. Breathtaking scenery, stunning cities, haunting history, UNESCO World Heritage Sites and a variety of ports, large and small, make Scotland the perfect cruise destination. Scotland's cruise ports are ideally located for inclusion in Britain and Ireland itineraries, transatlantic repositioning, or for combining with cruises to Iceland, the Faroe Islands, or the Norwegian, Norwegian fjords and Europe. And the Cruise Scotland website estimates that the market was worth more than £49 million last year to Scotland, when 457 vessels brought 401,325 passengers, with value and passengers reaching new heights and a number of ports breaking their own records. Presiding officer, this has been an important opportunity to put on record this Parliament's recognition of the significance of the cruise industry in Scotland and to recognise the very particular success which is Greenock Ocean Terminal. So may I once again thank everyone who has supported this motion. I look forward to their contributions to the debate and I congratulate all who have contributed to that success which is Greenock Ocean Terminal. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate, speeches of four minutes or so and I call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Margaret McTougall. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, at the outset, I want to congratulate uh, Annabel Goldie for securing uh, this debate. Uh, and uh, certainly I, uh, for one, actually, uh, for the first time ever, uh, actually agree 100% with everything that Annabel Goldie had to say uh, in this chamber. Um, but uh, certainly, uh, Presiding Officer, in the, in the past week, uh, we, we've heard of uh, further efforts being made to promote tourism uh, in Scotland. And uh, today, uh, certainly, I would like to remind, to remind members of the Chamber that to recognise the importance of creating a, a prosperous tourism industry for all of us in Scotland. And Inverclyde has been successful in growing its marine tourism sector over the last few years. Um, as we heard from Annabel Goldie, this year Inverclyde's economy expects an £8.7 million boost from the record-breaking numbers uh, of visitors to the Greenock Ocean Terminal. And uh, Inverclyde is readily becoming a set destination for port for tourists from all over Europe and also uh, from elsewhere. And in 2015, for the first time ever, and I, mean, I think this, it's, an it's a point that really we can't stress enough, for the first time ever, uh, there's going to be a cruise line uh, actually sailing, sailing from Greenock to elsewhere, to the Caribbean. And certainly Peel ports, who operate the port, expect that, uh, that each cruise ship visitor will contribute an average some £80 to the local economy and let's not forget the 25,000 crew members who also spend money and time in the Inverclyde and who also contribute to the economy. As I was uh, putting, some, uh, putting some words together uh, for today, it, it, I, actually, I remembered that I'd actually put forward a motion uh, of, uh, kind of on similar vein uh, some years ago and it was actually in uh, 2010 and uh, see if I can find the motion now. And certainly in 2010, uh, the situation uh, was actually, the, it was nearly 40 cruise ships were actually going to go through the Greenwich Ocean Terminal. Uh, and in terms of the, the sum, it was 50,000 tourists to Inverclyde. So from 2010 to now, that's a huge increase. Um, I mean, a, a doubling of the numbers of people uh, going to uh, going to the Greenock Ocean Terminal and also through the Inverclyde economy. And as, as a consequence, I think the point that Annabel Goldie raised in terms of uh, basically lavishing the praise upon the people of Greenock Ocean Terminal, but also uh, the people at, of the Inverclyde Tourist Group, I think certainly cannot be understressed at all. Uh, I think we have to consider that uh, just how much of a, an improvement that actually has been and how beneficial it will be to the Inverclyde economy. Uh, so I do want to lavish some further praise actually on the Inverclyde Tourist Group. I, I, I've met them uh, on a number of occasions and spoken at a couple of their uh, AGMs and certainly was there again uh, just last summer. Uh, for a, a wonderful bunch of people who just have got such a, 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 a belief uh, and a passion for the, for the area of Inverclyde. And every single person uh, donates their time, contributes their time and their efforts and their energies 
for no money whatsoever. They do it because they love the area and they want Inverclyde to be promoted as wide as it possibly can be. And I think the efforts of every single person at the tourist group cannot be, uh, cannot be underspoken at all. Uh, they are just a, a tremendous group of individuals. One point regarding the, 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 the issue of the, the, the visitors who actually go to Inverclyde. It's estimated that one third uh, of those visitors actually stay in Inverclyde. The rest will maybe travel out, maybe go to Loch Lowland or Glasgow or even Edinburgh uh, for day trips. But one third stay in Inverclyde and that's a huge amount of money and a huge amount of economic potential that can actually be, uh, be benefited and also generated. But I'm certainly conscious of time, uh, signing off, so I'm going to, to wind up, but I could probably speak about this all day. But certainly, once again, I'd like to congratulate uh, Annabel Gowley for securing uh, this motion, and I wholeheartedly agree with, uh, with, certainly with the comments and the sentiments of the motion. Thank you. Um, Margaret Big Tickle. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, congratulations to Annabel Goldie on bringing this motion to the Chamber today, and I totally agree with the sentiments of the motion. Greenock Terminal has added to the economy of Inverclyde and the rest of Scotland, as we have heard from the speakers today. And I'm fortunate in that I have experienced the hospitality of the terminal when I have embarked on several occasions when I have sailed to Norway and Morocco from Greenock on cruises, which was uh, delightful, I have to say. And uh, one of the highlights of leaving from Greenock Ocean Terminal is the fantastic send-off that you get from the pipe band and the Highland dancers. And let's not forget the huge, big foam. I presume it's a man inside it, but he's kilted and he has the berry and he's all made out in a, a Scottish uh, outfit and he attempts to dance and jigs on the, the quayside as well as the ship is departing. So it's a great experience for uh, those of us who are fortunate enough to go on a cruise and I know the, preside, the presiding officer has uh, been on one of these as well and um, it's fantastic for the people who are not Scottish who join the cruise as well, because lots of people come from across the UK to join the cruises from Greenock. So it's a fantastic experience, and I'm sure the same happens when you come in, when you're visiting. So, and that's why it's so popular, obviously, with visitors. I too would like to congratulate Inverclyde Tourist Group for the service that they provide to the cruise passengers, like myself, and to the thousands of visitors, because as we've heard today, they are the best in the world. Uh, and I would just like to leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in which case, I now invite uh, Derek Mackay to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, it's, I suppose by some coincidence that my day started pretty much in Inverclyde uh, this morning when I was visiting Ferguson's Yard, which is more good news uh, from Inverclyde in terms of the work that's going there and another reminder of the spectacular scenery that the area has to offer. I too would like to congratulate uh, Annabelle Goldie in securing this debate and uh, supporting Greenock Ocean Terminal. I also share her congratulations to Peel Ports for increasing the numbers of vessels and passengers using this port, predicted to be in excess of 100,000 this year. Congratulations must also go to the Inverclyde Tourist Group, who, working in close partnership with the port, provides, as has been described, an excellent ambassadorial service for passengers, encouraging them to enjoy what the area has to offer. And, of course, to thanks to Cruise Scotland, the industry body that has played such a leading role in promoting Scotland as a destination for all the major cruise lines. Uh, cruising is an important sector to Scottish tourism. While we can't always have the weather that the Mediterranean or the Caribbean can offer, we have amazing scenery, epic history and culture and events that continues to provide such a draw. And Greenock provides the perfect location for one of Scotland's top cruise ports. At the head of the sheltered and scenic Clyde estuary, Greenock Ocean Terminal hosts a deep water quay, not only able to accommodate the growing size of cruise ships, but act as the perfect entry point to the attractions of the west of Scotland, indeed further afield. 
Indeed, thanks to an invite from the Federation of Small Business, my ministerial colleague, Fergus Ewan, has already had the opportunity to visit the port last August, along with Stuart McMillan and Duncan McNeil, meeting volunteers from the Inverclyde Tourism Group and seeing firsthand the impressive work that Peel Ports are doing to encourage further growth in this sector. For example, Peel Ports work closely with the tourist group to ensure a warm welcome always awaits every arrival. The group must be commended as a good example of local people passionate about their area, volunteering to act as ambassadors for Inverclyde. Their enthusiasm and knowledge helps ensure visitors get the most out of their time in the area, learning about the many places of interest nearby and offering free local tours. As Annabelle Goldie notes, 56 vessels are due to berth at the port this year, with Greenock welcoming some of the newest and most famous vessels. For example, p and newest liner, the Britannia, launched by the Queen this year, will be visiting in July as part of our maiden season. Queen Mary II will be arriving on the 21st of May to celebrate Cunard's 175th anniversary. And Cunard continue to maintain their proud relationship with the river and its people, evoking memories of the three previous Cunard queens launched on the river. It is good to see that the Clyde and Greenock in particular are very much still working for Cunard. Greenock is not only a transit port, a harbour where passengers stop off as part of their cruise, it's also an important embarkation point, with 18 cruises this year commencing and ending in Greenock, servicing routes such as the Baltic and the Western Isles. And new for this year, as Stuart McMillan has mentioned, offering a direct cruise from Greenock to the Caribbean this November. This benefits Scottish consumers who wish to cruise, avoid needing to take the long journey south to Southampton. And it's also worth noting that it's not just passengers who benefit the local economy. As Stuart McMillan's also mentioned, 20,000 crew members contribute to the local economy as well. Last week, Cruise Scotland attended the Global Industries' premier event, Cruise Shipping Miami. Cruise Scotland, as the industry-led marketing body, used this opportunity to further promote Scotland as the ideal cruise destination, even using a whisky tunnock's taste-off to entice delegates present. Cruise Scotland represent all of the main cruise ports in Scotland, from Lerwick to Leith, Greenock to Invergordon. They continue to actively market Scotland with forthcoming attendance at the major European cruise event in Hamburg this September and ongoing familiarisation visits for cruise line executives. 2014 had been the best year for the cruise industry in Scotland and 2015 is on track to, to beat that. Cruise Scotland estimate that the market was worth some £49 million last year when 457 vessels brought over 400,000 passengers, an increase in nearly 17,000 passengers in the previous year. While they expect the same number of vessels this year, a trend to larger vessels, some having as many as 16 decks, taking around 4,000 passengers, should see an overall increase in the number of passengers, up by an estimated 8% to over 430,000. And it's good to see that the appeal of Scotland, even in the cold season, means that the cruising period has extended to March, from March to mid-December this year. The Scottish Government is very supportive of this industry and engages with Cruise Scotland and other key stakeholders. Stuart McMillan, the convener of the Marine Tourism Cross-Party Group, is already aware the Government was able to provide support to Cruise Scotland to assist the trade body in attending the EC's inaugural Pan-European Dialogue with cruise stakeholders in Brussels earlier this month. This helped ensure that the Scottish cruise sector's interests were fully represented. And this illustrates the kind of stakeholder commitment that we have. We've outlined the importance in Scotland's National Marine Plan, recognising that the cruise tourism is one of the growing sectors, demonstrating strong potential to expand further, and we've secured appropriate infrastructure being made available to accommodate larger ships. Uh, the emphasis in the Marine Plan and the National Planning Framework on sharing port infrastructure uh, developed for other commercial reasons uh, will assist, for example, renewable energy may offer further opportunities. Visit Scotland, Scottish Enterprise and Highlands and Islands Enterprise are all represented in the Cruise Scotland Steering Group. And Visit Scotland engages with local bodies such as the Inverclyde Tourist Group keen to market their areas. And in relation to Greenock, Visit Scotland will also be chairing a Riverside Inverclyde workshop next month aimed at businesses hoping to maximise opportunities from the cruise market. However, 
This government does continue to remain concerned about the damaging effect that the uncertainty around the unconsulted upon face-to-face -face passport checks introduced by the UK government in 2012 continues to have on the cruise industry and the delay for passengers that this creates. It's most unhelpful. We continue to press the UK Home Office for a proportionate process in response to the cruise industry and local authority concerns around their actions. The cruise industry view is clear on the issue. The industry need a bankable written commitment from the UK Home Office that for as long as it continues to insist on stopping visitors and cruise passengers and checking their passports, it will meet the costs involved. That said, the cruise industry would of course prefer that the UK Home Office operated in a manner that enabled all of the UK to compete for cruise traffic on the same footing as Norway, France and other nearby countries, relying on advance information from the ship and stopping only those, very few of course, who might be of, of interest. Such an approach would only encourage further traffic at existing ports and enable smaller ports to consider entry into the expanding niche cruise market with smaller vessels but targeted destinations. So in conclusion, uh, conclusion uh, presiding officer, we hope that the partnership working, the assets that we have and the support that we uh, provide will all be well received. And once again, we uh, congratulate all those involved with Greenock Ocean Terminal for their success and long may it continue. Many thanks. And that concludes Annabel Goldie's debate on Greenock Ocean Terminal. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.